New this morning, Denver police are investigating a deadly hit and run. DBD says it happened on Colfax in Quebec. One man sadly died. As of now, we do not know if police are actively looking for a suspect or who that suspect may be. Today, we're expecting to hear new testimony in the January 6th hearings on Capitol Hill, including a man from Estes Park. 90 supporter Darius Johnson joins us live in the studio now. And Darius, the Colorado man is expected to testify against a far right organization. Yes, indeed, Natasha. Jason Van Tettenhove started as a journalist in bed with the Oath Keepers, then became their spokesperson. Now he's being asked to testify against the group he once worked with. Tettenhove is being asked to provide historical and context to how the Oath Keepers radicalized and took advantage of conspiracy theories over the years. Members of the group are being charged with seditious conspiracy for trying to prevent Biden from assuming his role as president. According to an indictment from the Justice Department, the Oath Keepers plan to travel to D.C. and bring weapons, hoping to threaten the certification of the Electoral College vote. The DOJ also says members use social media, text messaging, and encrypted messaging applications to try to prevent the transfer of presidential power. The communication piece is really important because we need to know who they were in communication with within Trump's inner circle um, and what they were discussing. Now, all of the members of the Oath Keepers involved have pled not guilty. If convicted, they each could face a maximum of 20 years in prison. The hearing begins at 11 o'clock our time, and it, it is expected to last until 2. You can watch it right here on 9 News once it begins, and of course, we'll have an update at 4. Natasha, back to you. All right, Darius, thank you for the update. Also from Capitol Hill this morning, the Biden administration says hospitals and doctors must provide abortions if a mother's life is at risk. A letter to health care providers say hospitals could face penalties if abortions are not provided when a mother is in danger. The Secretary of Health and Human Services says federal law on emergency treatment guidelines preempts state abortion bans. New this morning, a federal judge blocked a 2021 Arizona personhood law. It gave legal rights to unborn children. Abortion providers worried the law could lead to criminal charges like assault or child abuse and alleged it is unconstitutionally vague. The judge agreed, ruling the law could invite a host of criminal or civil charges, but there's no way to know exactly which ones. All abortions in Arizona stopped last month after the U.S. Supreme Court said women do not have a constitutional right to abortion. And the first over-the-counter birth control pill could be available soon in the United States. HRA Pharma announced it submitted an application to the FDA to make its birth control pill called Opil available over the counter. If the application is approved, it would be the first daily birth control pill available without a prescription in the U.S. The company says the switch from prescription would help even more women access contraception without those unnecessary barriers. This morning, police are looking for the person responsible for firing into multiple homes in a North Glen neighborhood. Police say someone targeted one home by by mistake, a mother says one of those bullets hit within inches from her daughter's bed. North Glen police say around four in the morning on July 1st, someone fired a gun at her home on Josephine Way. Officers think the shooting happened because of an argument at a neighbor's party nearby, and the suspect meant to target that home instead. Thankfully, she and her kids were not hurt. That's your safe haven. That's where you have your family. That's where you lay your head down every night. That's where you feel safe. That gets taken away from you as soon as this happens. Yeah, very unsettling. Two other homes were also hit with gunfire. Officers found a total of 30 rounds. If you have any information, you're being asked to contact police. We'll not save every life from the epidemic of gun violence, but if this law had been in place years ago, even this last year, lives would have been saved. A celebration of new bipartisan legislation meant to reduce gun violence. President Joe Biden shared the moment with survivors and family members of victims of mass shootings over the years, including those from Columbine and Aurora. This new law is considered one of the most significant pieces of gun legislation in 30 years. It offers grants to states for red flag laws, enhances background checks by including juvenile records, and closes the boyfriend loophole by keeping guns away from non-spouse dating partners convicted of abuse. The bill did not, however, include two of the president's priorities, a ban on a assault weapons and background checks for all gun purchases. Both are widely opposed by Republicans in Congress. Right now, the investigation into the fire that killed a family of five in Green Valley Ranch is testing how police can use our online search results to track us. The fire killed the five members of the Joel family almost two years ago. Gavin Seymour is one of two teens charged as adults in this case. His attorney is asking to throw out evidence tied to Google. He says Denver police got a search warrant for Google asking for 
IP addresses for anyone who searched for the Joel family's address. The warrant led to more evidence. He argued that it violated Seymour's Fourth Amendment protection from unreasonable search. Nine News legal expert Scott Robinson says laws often lag behind technology. He believes this case could get the attention of a higher court. A privacy rights advocate we spoke to called the warrant an invitation for abuse. There's a hearing on August 19th. This morning, there's a new price tag on free. Denver Public Libraries are asking for more money. On Monday, librarian Michelle Jeske asked City Council to add a property tax increase to Denver's November ballot. The library wants the city to increase the property tax to raise $30 million a year, and that is the equivalent of about 50 bucks a year on a $469,000 home. Last November, Denver voters approved a series of general obligation bonds that included money for Denver libraries. The bonds will pay for two new libraries and for renovation of the Hampton branch. The library has until August 29th to get city council to approve that ballot question. And we have an update for you this morning. Frontier Airlines says it does not have enough votes to merge with Spirit. Frontier CEO is asking for another delay in a shareholder vote on the deal. The vote has been postponed three times already and it's scheduled for this Friday. Spirit's shareholders are already debating a buyout offer from JetBlue Airways. Well, another historic announcement for Broncos country. The group buying the team has announced a new addition. Former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice has now joined the Walton Penner family ownership group. Yeah, in a statement on Twitter, <coughs> Rice called it an honor to join the group. Rice moved to Denver when she was 12 years old. She wrote, quote, to be able to combine my love of the game with my love for this great city and team is an adventure of a lifetime and a great opportunity. Rice also has a connection to the University of Denver. 90s reporter Noel Brennan spoke to a dean who thinks Rice's move to football makes perfect sense. It's just an inspiration to have her as a presence here at the school. A graduate can go so many different places. She was an accomplished uh, ice skater. She's a concert pianist. I mean, she's, she's an extraordinary talent across the board. Condoleezza Rice went all the way to Secretary of State. She's such a role model. But never really left the University of Denver. Condi's really a presence here at the school. She got her PhD here at the Corbell School. Uh, her Joseph Corbell, Madeleine Albright's father, was her mentor. Fritz Mayer, dean of the Corbell School of International Studies, isn't surprised to see where an alumna goes next. When I got the news this morning, I thought, oh yeah, that makes sense. Rice is joining the ownership group of the Denver Broncos. This seems like a perfect fit for her. I know enough about her interest in sports. A diplomat learned offense and defense from her dad. And so football matters to me because it is first and foremost the greatest set of memories with my dad. She shared those memories in 2015, accepting an award from the National Football Foundation. It was my father, an offensive lineman, who said, always watch the offensive line, Condoleezza. That's really where it happens. What kind of block was that, Condoleezza? That was a trap block, Daddy. What are they getting set up? That's a screen, Daddy. That's how we spent our Saturdays and our Sundays. Rice's next move seems fitting to Mayor. She's a diplomat. Right? She's, she's so good at with people and with different communities. And the NFL struggled with that in, in a lot of ways in terms of its ownership patterns. Well, she brings that kind of diversity to the ownership pool. A graduate who made it to the global stage goes to the gridiron. And now co-owner of the Denver Broncos, so it's quite a resume. Noel Brennan, 9 News. <laughs> and the dean's certainly not alone in that opinion. I mean, she definitely proved herself mm -hmm. when she made that playoff selection committee mm -hmm. a few years ago. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, and it's so cool to see that relationship she had with her dad also yeah, and her yeah. interest from football starting so young. And I think it's the perfect mix. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens next. Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson also happy to see Rice join the ownership group, saying the Walton Penners are putting together a winning team and making a lot of history. And he also said that his sister, a Stanford, for grad would be proud that Rice is on his team. She currently runs the school's Hoover Institute, a public policy research center.